I've learned in his class and has reflected in, in every other part of my life. You know, that's not something that just applies to history um, because Mr. K is devoted to doing your very, very best in any situation. And that's something that has really impacted me, just, just his, his zeal for, for uh, perfection. My excitement translates to them. And I realize how much there is to learn and how much excitement there is out there. And I just ask them to find out on their own. And I expect nothing but the best. And they always exceed my expectations. And so with there being so much fun in history and so many amazing stories, I just ask the kids, hey, go out and, go out and learn a story. And, and because the stories themselves are so great, once the kids realize that these are good stories, that they want to learn more. To be honest with you, I can't take too much right, of the credit so for it. It's the really Japanese the credit goes to my students who would just do what I ask them to do. And the second reason is because there is so much great information out there that once they find what history and, and knowledge can give them, they go off like a rocket. And that's all I have to do. He's given me, me that pas passion for history. And that passion's really helped me in making decisions that I make every day. Um, I have another passion for politics, and everything I've learned in history really helps me make decisions as far as voting, as far as understanding all the current events today. And there's just so many parallels between history and what you see today. Once you give the kids the taste, they'll, they'll never turn around. I've had so many students do the things I've asked them to do at a younger age on their own now. They'll just go, they'll do it without me there, with other, taking other teachers. They'll come to me and say, I want to do it again. I have always been motivated, but not necessarily always really wanted to do the work. And in his class, I find myself a lot of times wanting to because I know that I'm going to benefit from it and I know that I'm really going to learn from it. It's not just your average busy work or something to fill in the day. It's really. I'm really understanding uh, our country's past and that's really helpful to me because you can carry on an intelligent conversation about things that have happened in our past that can be related to now and I think that's really cool. I want them to know that we're all human beings, whether it be in the past or whether it be in the present. And we start with the past because if I learn not to judge somebody in the past, then that translates to not judging somebody in the present. And with that recognition comes tolerance, and I want them to also realize how crucial the decisions they make are. And last but not least, to give them the tools to make very important life decisions themselves. And so by giving them critical thinking tools, by showing them how people in the past dealt with difficult situations. I hope that that will allow them to make their own personal decisions to help them as well. I actually enjoy this class and I'm, I mean I do school because I have to and I want to get good grades and everything but with Mr. K I actually want to learn what he has to teach. I love going to work every day because their enthusiasm, their interest, um, the way they look at things, the freshness and, and most importantly uh, and people who are not in teaching could probably appreciate this more, their lack of cynicism is probably the most refreshing thing that I learned from students. Everything is wonderful. There is, there is no cynicism in, in, in a classroom. I, I actually, when I was a sophomore, I had him for world history, and I actually wrote more in his yearbook than I wrote in some of my friends' yearbooks, because he, he, that was the year that um, he really just sort of turned around my whole view of how I was learning and that sort of thing. And, when I was a freshman and I had him actually, I remember thinking his class was extremely difficult and just getting irritated with it actually, but then from how well he teaches it just became part of the norm and I think I'm going to be well prepared for college because of the work ethic that he instills in his students. My very first year I didn't teach this way and I almost went crazy and I invented this all the things I did, not just because of all the things I've told you, but as a survival instinct, to be honest with you. And so um, what just keeps me going every year is it is always, always different. And it's always exciting. And it's, uh, it keeps you alive. I know if I left the teaching field, I would probably turn into a cynic. He's very, very good at forcing you to 
be motivated, more or less. Um, you're always, I'm not exactly sure how he commands the level of respect from his students that he does, but it's most, it, it's, it, well, it's a combination of everyone knowing that he knows what he's talking about and the second that he actually cares whether or not you learn it. Number one thing I always say is not to judge. And that, that's the most important. And, and that sounds like a very general kind of answer and something that they could use like in the voting booth, although that is part of it. But it's also a one-on-one -on -one thing that's very important. And I try to, to bring those kinds of decisions into their own personal lives. Uh, I will talk about, you know, your relationship with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Try not to judge. Put yourself in their shoes. So I can take, you know, looking back at slave masters in the 1800s and turn that into, well, you know, when you're not getting along with your boyfriend, it's a similar kind of thing. So, you know, that's really my advice is always to put yourself in someone else's shoes before you make any kind of uh, decision about them. He makes me feel very um, valued and like my opinion is just as good as everyone else's or as good as his and he would never overlook uh, my thoughts as a student or anyone else's. Um, he never makes us feel inferior by any means. He's always willing to listen and wanting to know how what he's teaching is affecting us and how we can relate it to our own lives. I really am a history nut. I, I'm absolutely passionate about, but I don't, I'm not passionate about just the stories. Uh, there are some people who will dress up as Civil War reenactors. Um, there are some people who will read every possible book there is on a particular battle. I'm not that kind of a passion. My passion is for the power of history. It, 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 it amazes me at how much what people learn affects how they act in life. And because I realize that power, I am passionate about making sure they learn the right thing and not come to the wrong conclusions. Mr. K is the sort of teacher who really makes high school that, that big transition from childhood to adulthood. He really makes people become individuals. He, he brings us from middle school where we're all kind of in our cliques and everything and he takes you out of that and says you can't let other people define you anymore. You need to start defining yourself. You need to say this is who I want to be and need to work toward that. And he's always done that and uh, sometimes I think it pre gets pretty discouraging when he gets stuck with classes he doesn't, you know, that are a little more difficult to work with and kids that don't really want to uh, learn and don't want his message. But that's where I, I, I hope we could offer some encouragement that he has impacted us greatly and that he will continue to do that and I, just, I hope he does because he's a tremendous asset to Dean High School and he's, he's had a major impact on my life. I suppose I'll stop doing what I'm doing when everybody gets it and, and, and everybody has the message. So I would, that really is what motivates me, is the desire to just keep, keep plugging on. I don't think that teachers get thanked enough and especially in his case, he really deserves it. And I would just want him to know that I was really appreciative and for him to know that he has had a large impact on me, my life, and my educational growth. I, I really am honored by all of this and the fact that Pinellas County spends so much time not with me perhaps but just with recognizing what we do you know I've won a lot of awards in the past um, from the DAR from National History Day and things like that but to have my peers recognize me the ones who are in the trenches with me is is the greatest honor and so even if, if this is all there is, I've already done, gotten so much out of it and, and it's wonderful. So just a, a sense of, of thank you to everybody who's involved with this process. Teaching really is a blessing. Um, you can talk about all of the problems we have and there's so, so many. But when you get right down to it, when you close that door and you're inside with a group of young people and the energy and when the, the lamp of knowledge, when that all gets going, it just can't be beat. It, it, it's just awesome and nothing, nothing can replace that.
Watch Congressman Bill Young representing the 10th Congressional District, as Michelle said, which represents Largo and Pinellas County mm -hmm. as part of this Festival of States parade. Again, we're in downtown St. Petersburg. Live here on UPN 44 as the day parade does continue. And the Pinellas County 2004 Teacher of the Year. I don't know if you're related to any teachers, but I got a teacher in my household. I got a mother-in-law who's a teacher. I got friends who are teachers. So anytime we can recognize an educator, we need to do that. And we'll see if the Teacher of the Year keeps Eddie Yarb in line here <laughs> down, downstairs. This is Alan Kay. He is Teacher of the Year. He's from Dunedin High School. He's here with his family. Congratulations, first of all. Thank you so much. This is quite an honor. Did you ever think that all those hours you put in the classroom would lead you into riding in the parade? Absolutely not. This is an incredible honor. Well, you're an incredible teacher. And uh, would you like to say hi to all your kids back at Dunedin High School? Absolutely. Go Dunedin High School. And no cutting class on Monday, right? No, absolutely <laughs> not. No, this is a great group. It's the kids that make this job so wonderful. They're the real reward. Well, he's a teacher who carries Alan Kay. It's an honor to meet you, Alan. Have a good time in the parade. That's the kind of dedication that we get here in Florida high schools. Alan Kay, a super teacher, he deserves to be in the parade. We'll go back to you, TJ and Michelle. Thanks, Eddie. And we should mention that Alan was also riding with his wife, Heidi, and their three children, Joshua, Rachel, and Jamie. How about that? And now we got the Sunshine City Council. Today we'd like you to meet a young man who makes a habit of winning awards. Most recently he was selected as not the teacher of the year, but the educator of the year for Pinellas County. Alan Kay, uh, what was it like uh, when you were selected for this educator of the year award? It was the greatest honor of my life, really. It was, I, the day afterwards, I described it with all my students as like being the coach who's won the Super Bowl and being carried by your players. It was just, it was just uplifting and like riding on a cloud, I guess. What was the process? There are some 8,000 teachers in Pinellas County, and you were selected from that yeah. crowd. Well, it's a, it's a very well thought out step-by-step um, -step process where you get nominated by somebody in your school usually your principal but not always and then you fill out forms and you get recommendations written by your peers and then those go to the main office and then they're reviewed I don't know how that reviewing takes place and then they set up semi-final or, or finalists and then the finalists get all get observed and then they have semi-finalists were you aware from the get-go that you had been nominated by one I knew of your... I had been nominated yeah that was that was about the only thing I was aware of and then uh, the difference between this year and last year is that last year you could look on the Pinellas County Schools website and see if you were a finalist. And um, so the po I would, my administrator would tell me, oh, you just made it to a semifinalist, and then you just made it to a finalist, and you're in two categories as a finalist. And so it was really exciting, and everybody was kind of involved now, in that. Was there a ceremony when uh, this award was presented to you? The initial winning of the award was at Tropicana Field. And so that was literally like the Academy Awards. That was unbelievable. They, uh, they had, you know, the, the band playing and uh, everybody dressed in their finest gowns and the, using the Jumbotron. And, and our 2004 Outstanding Educator of the Year, a teacher that makes history come alive from Dunedin High School, Mr. Alan Kay. The core of any school, the backbone, so to speak, is always the teachers. At Dunedin High, I have been truly blessed. I have never seen a more dedicated group of individuals. Like so many of you, they are in the trenches for our kids, while at the same time enforcing new ideas, writing grants, and taking on responsibility after responsibility to make our school better. When it, be so, when it would be so easy to simply shut the door and go home at 3 o'clock, Dunedin teachers are doing their job because they care. I know this sounds cliche, but I really do feel humbled by all the hard work they do, and they make me want to work that much harder. What did the award mean to your students? I think it made them really proud. And if there's anything that I learned from this, 
from an awards standpoint and how to handle awards with your students, it's that you should 